So hello students, good afternoon and welcome to 3ds Max online training program at Psyched Center. And uh, my name is Setu Nandanya and I am an Autodex certified instructor. So let me begin our today's class with the 3ds Max software. In our today class we are going to discuss about lighting. So this is our uh, opening screen. Let me create some object over here. Then we will work in the lights. So Alt W. And uh, here we have a plane. For example this much. Right. And some objects. Let me place teapot. Now you have to understand some things over here. See, there are uh, so many things uh, that we need to keep in our mind because now we are working with the visualization module. So we have object also, we have materials also, right? So we need to focus on all the objects and uh, every parameters at a time. Then and then we will get the uh, particular and proper result. So for example here we have some teapots right and this is our floor and now let we add our lights. So for that go to the create and here we have third option lights where you will find two types of lights photometric light and standard light. So go to the standard light. And here mainly we have three types of standard light, Omni, Spot and Direct. We will begin with the Omni light first. So click on Omni. So this is a point source of our light. Where actually light is going to emit from a single point to all the directions. Right. So I am placing it over here as you click on the screen this Omni light your scene will be like this black in color because this light is below this plane right or inside this plane. So press W and take it up and you will notice that we have a lighting effect. Because as you place your light in the max environment, the default light of 3ds max will be uh, turned off. Right. So now our uh, whatever artificial light that we have placed will work only. If I am going to delete this. So this lighting effect we have is known as default light that 3ds max provides us. But as we place our own light like this here, so the default light will be disabled and only our artificial lights will be there. Right. And also let's have a look in a rendered view. So there is some problem with my mouse. Okay, no problem. So actually we will place our light somewhere here and from the height point of view okay this much is fine. So we place our light like this okay but when you render this scene you will not get this light source in your image you will only get lighting effect but this light bulb will not be visible over there right so press control q for the rendered view right and here we have output you can do all the experiments if you want like uh, you can create one uh, sphere right then place it inside this uh, light bulb
from the top view place it here and from the isometric view place it here right like this then go to the material m4 material and here you can create a material with the transparency so opacity and uh, glossiness should be little low okay and color should be white then select your object and assign that material over there now render your scene and you will get some kind of effect over there so you can uh, do this type of exper experiments if you want if you want a frosted glass effect just use a ray trace material because we have some other controls over here for the glass material as i told you we have index of reflection you can change it transparency we have right to provide some kind of transparency okay and also reduce this uh, glossiness so we have matte finish over there so or you can add some bump parameter also so like this uh, this is our glass metal but it is not necessary let me remove it for now we are just working with the lights it's just an example to you that how to uh, work with the lights because we need to create that object around this light right it is in our task so first of all select this light and let me check a rendered preview first so here uh, i am choosing uh, angle like this okay and shift q so this is our render preview now see you need to notice something over here that this this light is not actually capturing uh, this face see we have a throughout view of this background over here from this over here also right so it's actually open it feels that it's open it's a broken piece so that is our forced two-sided option so go to your light select it go to the modification and here you will get that option two sided shadows turn that on two sided shadows and again render it if it is not going to solve because there are some values its separate values it has so it's my suggestion to use it from this restrict shadow let me go with the shadow map two sided it is i think not solved yet so you should go to the render setup go to the rendering render setup and turn this option on this force two sided this will apply to your entire uh, geometry then click close now click on the render and your problem will be solved see it is 
filled now it is not open or not broken so this is the first thing in your render setup you must have turned on this thing so please note down this one that in the options we must have this force two sided option turned on right otherwise it will not work properly now see if we are going to turn that off you will get the uh, idea that why we need that uh, now the next question is we are not getting actually shadow of these objects am i audible to you all hello students are you there yes sir okay if you have any kind of question you can just immediately ask me okay because it will feel like that i am teaching nobody no one is there for the question with the questions so your questions are very valuable for me right so don't hesitate just ask your questions so here next we have this shadows so for that select your light go to this uh, light settings over here in the modification and the next we have this shadow turn that on and click the render and here we have shadow now again render it okay so you get the idea that we are we are having now shadows but for the shadow we have different types of engines if you are using scanline render then you should go with the shadow map right this is suitable for the scanline render if you use a uh, ray trace then it will be a different result there will be uh, some different kind of result see it's a broken that options is not going to work properly so uh, okay just let me go to the uh, shadow map and we have done some changes over here so turn that off so this two sided shadows i am going to turn that off so here we have shadow and as i told you that why we need this two sided option but are you getting me okay let me begin with the beginning again here we are going to delete this light right and going to place a new light light omni light placing over here press w take a little bit up and going to render so this type of render settings we have okay now click on render and yes right so we are having a problem over here see this and due to this problem you will get a uh, that type of shadow effect also so select your light go to the modifications and next we have shadow so here we have shadows turn that on and take a rendered preview so see this type of uh, effect we are getting over here now if you want to solve this thing for the shadow only then we have a shadow parameter over here uh, that is whatever your render engine is there if you are using shadow map then we have a shadow map parameters if you are using ray trace then you will get ray trace parameter right so here we have shadow parameter for the ray trace shadow parameters so uh, this ray trace is not suitable for the 
uh, scanline render you will get a very less detailed output in that so use proper parameter proper shadow engine with your render right so these are the two options we have we have shadow map and we have ray trace and advanced ray trace also we have so you can use anyone just try to find out that you are getting a proper result or not for example we use mental ray shadow map over here and check the render first see we are not getting even render over here so this uh, shadow engine is not suitable for our scan line advanced ray trace so yes it is suitable but we are not getting the detailed result over here so in this way you have to choose your particular shadow engine right then and then you will get the shadows now we have a little blur result as we want or you can directly focus on the uh, viewport also but the exact effect you will get over here we will come on this thing later but let we discuss the next point next point we have is intensity and color and attenuation so we have three things over here and large that first of all we have intensity multiplier for example i want to increase this lighting effect three times so provide uh, intensity multiplier value and that much bright lighting effect you will get right so this is actually going to burn my image my image is going to burn due to lighting effect so it's a too much light if you want to decrease this light 0.5 0.5 and render it so it's a low light image right so you need to set your lighting as per your requirement your multiplier if it is fine enough then it is okay then also we have color for example i want a yellow light render it you will get yellow lighting effect right so this is our intensity this is our color then the next we have attenuation so in the attenuation it is a very complicated thing not that much complicated but it's a starting point of your light source and ending point of your light source so we have two attenuation over here near attenuation and far attenuation so just for a while let me close this render window and just focus on the viewport so you will get my uh, the exact idea that what i am talking about so i am placing this light near to the floor okay so it is almost near to the floor okay now just focus on my word or just uh, stay over here right so first of all our light is emitting from this point right and going at the infinite distance now for example i want to approach, provide a specific zone for the lighting that up to this much this much it should go and from here it should start so that is our near and far attenuation near attenuation means from where it should start so let me choose let me increase this value so you will get one sphere click on use and you will get this type of sphere right so here we have this two spheres we have now see we are discussing about near attenuation that means from where we want to start our lighting effect so this is the starting point so this sphere uh, see i am placing this sphere around with a 2 feet height 
right so this is my two feet spear inside this spear we have a completely black area with no lighting then from this sphere to the next sphere this one that is our end one this one bigger one right so from the starting sphere to this ending sphere our light will start increasing gradually so inside this small sphere we have completely black area so if i am placing my teapot inside this um, black portion you will not get any lighting effect over there right if it is outside that sphere then it will experience a little lighting effect and it is outside of the second sphere then it will experience a full lighting effect right so we have two sphere for the near attenuation so if you decrease the second sphere diameter and you provide a same value for start and end then you will get a cluster clear edge over here because uh, after this sphere it is suddenly going to start start emitting light inside that sphere we have nothing complete black and as we come out we have a full bright area right so up to this sphere we have no lighting effect this is our near attenuation setting it is clear now so just provide some gap between your both the spheres or your both the values so we have a gradually increasing light over here similarly next we have is far attenuation so in the far attenuation click on use so you will get two more sphere let me disable this one first and this is for the our destination up to which point our light should travel so this is the starting right let me take up to this much and this is the ending take it also shorter so after the sphere we have no lighting effect right whatever object will inside this sphere will experience the lighting effect if you choose both values same and you will get a very sharp edge right after that we have no lighting effect if you provide some gap between both sphere then this is the starting sphere this small one so after that sphere our light will gradually decrease and after this bigger sphere it will completely vanished so this is our near attenuation and far attenuation if you want to control your lighting effect up to particular range right so it is clear now the near attenuation and far attenuation let me use both so click on near attenuation and increase the end point so now the last time from this sphere our light going to start then keep increasing up to this then we have continuous lighting effect then after this sphere we our light will gradually decrease and at this sphere it is completely going to disabled right so beginning then increases then continues then decreasing and then end so it is clear now the near attenuation and far attenuation good so let we disable this both then next we have advanced effect let's have a look what we have so we have contrast control and diffuse and specular right so diffuse is your main light if you are going to disable that then you will get only specular effect due to that light so sometimes we create a light for the uh, diffuse purpose only so turn off the specular and uh, for uh, specular purpose we create another light for example i want a blue specular 
so what i will do i will create one more light right press w take at some height we have double lighting effect it is fine just go to here and turn off this diffuse so it will react for the specular only this second light and the specular should be so change this color to the blue we want a blue specular and hit ok and place this both light at the same position so the lighting effect we have is white but the specular is blue one see we have blue shaded area over here so you will get this type of output we have a blue zone over here see this area and on the reflective faces you will get a bluish shade on that right this is just a draft quality image but in this way you can combine two lightings at the same time so let me delete that and the next option we have in the advanced effect is ambient only if you turn on that ambient only then you will get a sketchy light for example you are creating a cartoon movies or cartoon animations then this type of uh, even lighting effect there is no um, natural drag or that type of effect you will not as, uh, experience we have a completely even lighting effect without any specular and all things right so this is like a uh, cartoon movies and we do not have that uh, shadow effect over here also right so this is our ambient option so if you turn that on then this diffuse and specular will automatically disable also we have contrast value so you if you increase your contrast value it will affect that uh, that type of things then some soften edges right so it will not applicable right now because we have a very tiny area but sometimes what will happen when you create a light it will emit a light over here then you have a clear edge that after that you have a different color then after that you have a little different shade so you can soften that edge using this option let me render it and uh, if you um, un focus this thing by color only then see here we have a bright color then up to this point we have a different color right and then as we go away we have a dark color so sometimes what happens uh, we have a clear edge over here in the image so we need to soft that thing with this option right so that's about the advanced effect then next we have is projector map we will discuss this projector map later now we have shadow parameter but before we discuss this shadow parameter let me discuss a first shadow effect so in the shadow effect we have one more option over here that is uh, exclude so for example i don't want a shadow effect of particular object so what we will do i want to remove uh, one of the object from this shadow effect so for that we have that type of controls just select it in the shadows we have exclude click on exclude and i want to exclude luminance or shadow casting i just want to exclude shadow casting for the teapot one so click on teapot one and take it over here so i just want to exclude shadow casting for teapot one click ok but you will not get any effect over here right you need to render it now see we do not have a shadow for this teapot one similarly i want to exclude illumination means lighting effect for teapot three take it over here click ok shift q see 
now this both t pod will not experience the lighting effect due to our uh, light but we have shadows if you want to exclude both at a time right then go to the exclude and choose both over here click ok and render it so we do not have shadow and we do not have a lighting effect on this object All right so this is our options for the include and exclude now let me discuss a shadow parameter so go to the shadow parameter and uh, here just set your view first now we will focus on a shadow shift q ok now in the shadow parameter we have first of all color so if you want a gray shadow then choose that color you will get that type of shadow right if you want a dark black shadow then choose that color you will get that type of shadow now we have density so if you increase the density of your shadow you will get more darker and darker shadow if you decrease the density then you will get a light shadow of your geometry like this right so these are the two parameters we can choose a colored shadow also right but this is for the some uh, play group students animation right it is fine but for our uh, realistic project this type of thing is not suitable and density let me take one again and render it so we have this result now next if you want to add any map for the shadow then you can for example i want to add one map with this uh, dent pattern then click on ok and render it so you will get that type of dent pattern in your uh, shadow right if you want a smoke effect then click on this circular take ok and render it you will get that type of effect we have a problem we need to invert this image so what we will do we will take a material then over here take this map and instant ok now select this and invert that color do we have invert option no then it is fine let we take a new map from here okay so now we have much darker uh, area we have so like this and now what we will do just turn this thing off now tag this what is this happening take this and take it all the way to the map over here and put it over here
turn on this map and ok so you will get that type of uh, result in your um, shadows right so it is clear now we can apply a map also in our shadows if you have a smoke map let me find we have noise map see this noise map we have smoke map also so take this smoke map open and render it we have this smoky effect in our render right so in this way you can uh, provide a map also then a light after shadow color so if you turn that on then uh, wherever your shadow is there uh, if it's uh, on glass then you will get this uh, output right but it is on the floor but so this option is not applicable for right now then we have atmospheric shadow parameter um, so it's a colors and amount opacity and color amount so it is fine then here we have shadow map parameter so we are using shadow map so if you increase this bias right then click on the render you will notice that nothing is happening it is fine just increase it ok first of all take this bias to the zero and we will see the effect of bias but uh, turn on this two sided shadow so you will eliminate these edges right click on render now see it is healed so that's why we need this two sided option but it is not healed over here in the object so for the object we need to go with the option now here are the sampling and bias option so if you decrease your sampling your sampling should be in the binary system right so click on render see we do not have a detail over here of uh, our shadow right uh, as we increase the sampling over here we will get that much detail shadow 32 render see we have something now 64 render we have a more detail then 128 256 then 512 then 1024 and 2048 so in this way as you increase the sampling your uh, shadow detail will be increased right now see we have a very detailed shadow then sampling range also we have so just change that parameter and find the details see now this is a very crispy edge we have so as you increase the sampling range you will get that much soften edge over there simply we have a bias effect then next we have a atmospheric effect we will discuss atmospheric effect later so uh, we skip one more thing right this projector map and this atmospheric effect so we will discuss this both thing later then the last we have a mental ray uh, illumination and mental ray settings we have so if you are using mental ray engine then and then go over there so yes that's it this much settings we have in the omni light so i think you get the uh, exit idea about how to set your light we have so many controls right so you need to spend more time much more time in the lighting and material applications now see we have a nice clear shadow it is clear now up to uh, this point 
this was the main task of our today's lighting effect okay good so you need to uh, create a circular geometry for the lighting purpose then you just place your light inside that right now next we have two more types of lights that is spotlight and direct light we have a very tiny difference in the spotlight and direct light So just <coughs> actually we can convert our omni light into spotlight also. So here we have spot and direct light or when you go to the create lighting standard here we have target spot and free spot then target direct and free direct. So these are the options we have. So let me get this free spot first and place it now let me remove this uh, omni light so we have only one lighting effect this one take it up so this light is like a cone right and it's a without target so you can orbit it type e and just rotate it wherever you want to focus right so this thing will um, like a stage animation right so this type of animations if you are creating uh, any project for the um, presentation like uh, let's say that circus and all so that type of auditorium you have and some presentations are there so you can follow this light to the particular subject like this this type of animation we can perform right and it is very simple just click turn on your horse auto key take your timeline to the next and change the position and turn off that so this is our animation see we will discuss about the animation but uh, in our last class okay this is just a preview so you get the exact idea that why we use this type of lights so uh, we need to set it manually the direction and the position right because it's a free light now the next one we have is the targeted spotlight so for that select and drag it and you will get two things one is the light bulb and one is the box which is the target now press W and as you move that it will always focus to that target so wherever the target uh, it will always focus in front of that point right so this is targeted spotlight and this is free spotlight if you want to select your target then just select your light 
right click and click over here select light target now this target is selected wherever you place this target this light will follow that target clear if you want to disable this target just select it go to the over here and you can turn off this target and this will become a free light similarly if you have a free light you can turn on your target and you will get a target box select that and place it as per your requirement it will follow that point right so we can convert our spotlight uh, sorry free light into targeted light and our targeted light into free light it is clear now so if you have targeted light then this rotation options will not work because it will focus on the target only if you turn that off then and then this option will work then next light we have is direct light now what is the difference between this uh, spotlight and direct light so just a minute you will get the exit idea so let me create a direct light so go to the create lights click on the free direct and you need to create place a light like this and this is the direct light where actually we are getting a lighting effect in the cylindrical form but the difference with this light and this light is here we have a light beam starting from point and going to spread around on this circle right so our light beam will move like this see this is our focus point so one point will move like this one point will move like this so this is in this way my light source will distribute but if you have a directional light direct light then all your light beam will be parallel we can say a light coming from sun so we have all the photons parallel with each other right so that's the difference uh, with the direct light and the spotlight your spotlight as you take far away it will become bigger and bigger that circle and as you take uh, near to the object it will become smaller and smaller but it is not possible with the direct light you take at <coughs> any distance it will remain at that size right because all the photons are parallel so that's the basic difference and now one more parameter we have in this light that is hotspot and follow up like near attenuation and far attenuation we discuss similarly we have hotspot and follow-up so let me discuss about the hotspot and follow-up so just select this light go to the modify and turn that off for a while and we will focus on this so here as you can see we have a cone over here so in the intensity color and attenuation we have all the parameters same near attenuation we have far attenuation we have but also we have one more thing see spot parameter if you want to use this near attenuation you will get a sphere over there right you can choose the position so from here our light will start and from here it will completely full light similarly far attenuation so my light should reach up to this point and up to this point it is going to vanish right so like this we have 
near and far right attenuation in the uh, spotlight also but also we have a spotlight parameter so this parameter are for the con this con right so go to the spot parameter and here we have hot spot that is our beam and fall off so your hot spot means your full lighting area so this is your inner con so as you decrease that your con will decrease so in this con we have a full lighting area then it is gradually decreasing up to this con so if you decrease the gap between hot spot and fall off you will get a sharp edge over there right and there must be a gap between two things right it's at 25.4 so here we have 27.4 this gap will be there we do not we will not get a completely sharp edge with this option also we have a rectangular option and a circular option so if you want a rectangular spot you can use rectangular and circular spot you can use circular in the rectangular we have aspect ratio so if you want a tv screen or a perfect square then you can change this aspect ratio as per your requirement now go with the circular and increase a gap between hotspot and fall off right so it's a same parameter like near attenuation and far attenuation but it works on this cone now similarly if you select this directional light turn on that thing so we have same uh, directional parameter over here and we have hotspot and follow up over here so as you increase this hotspot your lighting area will increase and this fall off right so these are the two cylinders we have and also we have a rectangular and a circular lighting effect <coughs> It is clear now hello students do you have any question up to this point Uh, sir which light will be best for using as a sunlight coming from window for the sunlight we can use sunlight or also we have sunlight right we will place sunlight don't worry about that uh, sunlight effect but yes if you just working for the interior purpose and you have only one window then you can use this directional light but for the sunlight we have sunlight arrangement completely uh, with the 3ds max environment so we will set that light set the, so that light effects we have in our next class and tomorrow we have a lens effect or volume effect also we have sunlights so these are the some lights we have in our tomorrow's class okay but yes in the option you can use this direct light just make your uh, hotspot big enough then your window and you can place it how to get light beam that is actually our volume effect we will discuss that in our next class it's a atmospheric effect right and in the atmospheric effects atmospherics and effect we skip this thing right we have two types of effects over there one is lens effect and one is volume effect so that light beam if you want that is our volume effect I will show you which type of volume effect is there
so let me uh, google it images see this image is see we have a light beam right so this is a volume effect here we have a volume effect so these are known as volume effect where actually you can view your light beam right <coughs> see this one we have 10 over here also like this so these are the light beams we have so that we will discuss in our next class tomorrow about adding volume effect it's a very simple example you can create this type of interior also just create couple of boxes over here and just black and white image we have so for the practice we have so many things how to get a simple candle light okay first of all candle that you have to create right uh, with the modeling tool but we can place one light over there so uh, for that uh, one thing is remaining as uh, thank you for reminding me so you can use this omni light also for the candle light but the difference is that as we go uh, at some distance that light be, uh, lighting effect will be reduced frequently right so see select it go to the that candle you have to create right as I told you then put this light beam on the top of your candle object right and here uh, we should take first of all color should be a uh, yellow stick not this type of yellow mm. okay now one more thing let me let me show you with the white color first so take a white now see go to the uh, where is that option yes dk in the dk we have three options over here see we have three types of mainly lighting effect one is a bright light that we use for the lighting purpose right and that light will uh, travel at the far distance at very far distance so that is our this light but we have some light that actually not going to travel at far distance it will going to vanish as we go away right so you can choose a decay over here inverse then what will happen just reduce the sphere so after this sphere we have a very low light effect as we go far away from the object we have a very low lighting effect if you have none then we have even lighting effect a very less effect as we go away but if you choose inverse over here then we have a very low lighting effect right outside the sphere and for the uh, fire station or for the candle light we should choose inverse square so we have a very dim light as we go away from the light source and set your sphere parameter as per your requirement okay now take a image see we have a bright light 
at the beginning and as we go away we have a very sharply decreasing lighting effect so that is our decay in lightings if you choose inverse then we have a, that less effect and if you choose none we have a bright light at the all position <coughs> got it so we create we need to create that candle our cell Any other question? Actually, it will take much time. We can create a fire effect also. See, it is not uh, in our syllabus, but we have time. So let me show you. Okay. Uh, other students have any question, then ask me. Otherwise, uh, we will continue with the fire effect. Yes, I am going to show you that. Let me delete um, this objects. And let's have a fire station. Let we create one fire station. Uh, for example, we want a cylindrical fire station or spherical one mm, on this. Okay, let we create on that. <coughs> I will not I am not going to create candle okay I am creating a fire station so the similar example so you will get the idea then a candle you need to create it is okay now nah? or I should create candle Just right click convert it into editable poly go with the plan and let me do insert over here with some amount okay and do extrusion on the bottom side okay and take a scale it down like this so this is a pot where we actually uh, going to fire things and uh, <coughs> go with the polygon again this one and scale it down little bit okay So this is uh, maybe we are going to create fire inside this um, ball right so for that go to the uh, system wraps deflector particle systems no actually we need to find that fire where is the fire fire fire
yes here we have so this is the gizmo uh, so let we add a spherical gizmo and create one uh, take the top view <coughs> and set it at the particular position take this to the origin take this also at the origin and take this also at the origin right so everything should be at origin okay now go to the side view and take this above and select this gizmo go to the modify here we want a hemisphere only half sphere we want radius should be little low take it down okay up to this point i think it is fine uh, just uh, let me take a fire little outside so we will scale it up so press r and scale it in a z direction we have this type of fire okay <coughs> or we can use full sphere also just take a bit up okay now it will look great just set the camera properly and then add a effect fire effect okay and take a preview in render so we have something over here right now we need to adjust each and everything as per our requirement so go to the fire click on this and uh, actually add and in the effect where is the fire yes here we have so click on that and uh, first of all stretch it is fine regularity it is also fine flame size detailing should be increased and uh, first of all we will increase the density the rest parameter leave, let will leave it so the density should be 30 take a preview and samplings let we increase the samplings 100 okay and uh, it's a fireball all right flame size we need to reduce to then flame details let's take 10 <coughs> regularity 0 0.8 it is too high 0 0.5 okay and stretch 1.5 now i think it is fine density let me increase it okay and samples decrease this samples decrease it more okay i think now it is fine it's too small 
that is fine In details samples we should take 25 Okay, so I think uh, this effect is fine, right? But it will not generate. Yes, we can animate fire. I will show you. But uh, this will not create any kind of uh, lighting effect. So for the lighting, what we need to do, we need to place a individual light over there, right? So this is my fire effect uh, density. I think it is high. one point eight regular it is fine stretches one point two no two point five Why we are not getting a detailed result? This is not so fine. Flame size should be 1.5. Okay. And flame details. Yes, this is the least detailed result. Hmm. 2.2 is fine, I think. Okay. Fine. Hmm. I think this is fine, right? Now let we uh, add a light over here. <clears throat> so turn off this uh, thing now. And uh, the next task is adding light. So click on the light, take this Omni light, place it, press W and take it to the origin in the Z we will place it over here around and <laughs> what we need to do just select it go to the edit and in the color it should be yellow right okay and in the decay it should be square inverse and then the multiplier should be low enough uh, which is okay fine just take a preview so we have a lighting around that due to that firewall which is fine <coughs> now just select this and this is the uh, firewall right okay lighting ball so increase it now um, what we will do we will take a animation so here I am creating one animation with the dull quality okay otherwise it will took so much time in the render and uh, we will not get any output at particular time so here I am uh, creating a animation for the <coughs> around uh, 3 seconds so for the 3 seconds we need 90 frames okay so turn on this auto key take this 
to the 90 frame the, this timeline then select this fire go to the 8 number and in the fire I am going to add the phase and drag so for example in one second it should change uh, around five times phase right or ten times phase so in one second it should change uh, 10 or 20 okay let me take 21 phase and 21 drift then turn off that so see this is the animation of phase and drift the value will continuously changing in this animation right now let we uh, set up some uh, for the lights also so turn on the auto key take your frame to the uh, 10 select your light and I am going to decrease this okay turn off so this is a small animation so in this way uh, you have to add uh, all the uh, points that up to this point it should increase a bit and the color should be a little orange okay then turn off that then next uh, five frames or seven frames so first stay over here turn on the auto key take some frames increase your uh, light bulb and the light should be a little white little bright okay and turn off so in this way you have to uh, provide the uh, frequent lighting effect or you can uh, provide some uh, maps and controls also if you have then but it is fine you can uh, for the beginning purpose you can use this timeline right and set your uh, lights and colors like this and turn off so in this way we just do a manually uh, changes over here right for the one second only and for the rest you have to do now I am going to animate this thing going to render this video right so <clears throat> go to the render and here uh, render setup turn on shift F or render video uh, preview video okay and now first of all let me take a HDTV with 721 28 pixels which is fine and take a preview okay I think it is fine so now go to the range from 0 to 90 and uh, <coughs> this is my uh, picture quality turn on this force two sided uh, make sure that shadow is on for the light right you can move the position also you can take this light up and down your shadow will be uh, affected right but we do not turn on that now I am going to save this file on the desktop with a name and the file format should be AVI click on save and uh, if you have any compressor you can use let me go with the uncompressed one uh, it will uh, give you us a very large size of file but it is fine let's have a look what we get so we set our uh, output on the desktop and click on render so it will render a 90 pictures step by step and give you a video of that 
because it's a low quality and we do not have apply any material over here that's why it is able to render it fast right <clears throat> and we will get the idea that we have done correct or not right why it is not finished okay it's creating a vi done <coughs> now <coughs> let me play that video the size of the video is 319 mb see this is the AVL file size because we create a uncompressed video right so for three second uh, screen is not visible but this uh, property dialog box may be visible to you right that I have shared this property dialog box now uh, just a minute I am trying to play this with any player if it is going to open okay so now uh, this video is visible to you say I'm going to play it uh, full screen do we have loop auto play Can we take it to the loop mode? Repeat. Right. So this we have fire effect and also focus on the light. It's just dimming and dimming out for the first second because we set it over there also we can uh, change the size of this fireball right while our animation we can just scale the size down and up so our fire will be small big so that type of effect we will uh, we can take while the animation so it's a time consuming process and depends on your interest It is fine. <coughs> so we will discuss about the camera animation and camera placement on day 9 and tomorrow we will discuss about the uh, lens effect and the volume effect of the lights. Right. So um, just stop this video. <clears throat> so uh, now if you have any question then you can ask me and how was our today's session you can uh, tell me you can share your comments <laughs> thank you In the assignment 6 uh, you just have to create lights uh, sorry sorry just materials that images I have shared right just try to place the images in your standard template with uh, individual formats some image in the bump some image in the reflection pattern right 
then lighting over there diffuse image is also there so try to place it <coughs> Okay, no problem then uh, I will show you that let me discuss it now Uh, the max screen is visible now <clears throat> Okay So uh, for that uh, brick material we just have to create one sphere With the diameter or a radius of two feet Right So this is your modeling task Turn off these edges. Go to the M4 material. And here you can take a standard material or a ray trace material. Whatever you want. Let's take ray trace. Right. And in the diffuse, I have added a diffuse material. So first of all let me call all the materials over here so you will get the exact idea so let me bring all them so go to the map go to the bitmap and go to the computer find that image so these are the images we have so open it again bitmap second one open it again bitmap uh, this one open it then bitmap the bump image and, uh, and this black and white image also for the reflection pattern or this one also right so these are the images that we have now turn on the rendered preview so the preview window over here so we will get the exact idea about the effect and you have to apply your uh, color material at the last okay first begin with the other objects uh, we have this uh, bump pattern so we will apply it on bumps now make sure your bump effect is proper if it is not then select your material go to the maps and uh, set the value of your map properly i think this is fine right then for the uh, <coughs> reflection pattern reflect we have this image let me place in reflect so this area will going to reflect your lighting effect right but it not that much proper so let me remove it uh, also we have a glossiness so let me add this black and white image to glossiness check the result what you get this becomes a very glossy area it is fine then for the uh, this lighting purpose we have luminosity so we apply this red image to that so that becomes a red image this glossiness is too high so the reduce the level of glossiness right we want glossiness but not that much and then just apply your main material to the diffuse and you will get that type of effect right so in this way we just have to work with the images that we have ok 
okay so tomorrow we will discuss about the rest of the lighting options we have in our class right so see you tomorrow bye